All right, what up, people? It's your boy Chig from Guna Eagle Eye coming to you again with a brand new video. Uh, this time it is to talk about Eagle Eye, which is my transfer rumor show where I talk to you about transfer rumors around the Arsenal. Now, um, first of all, I've got some news, a little bit of news uh, that I will announce at the end of the show. Hopefully, you guys will enjoy that and uh, hopefully find it entertaining uh, that was the that is the aim the purpose of that announcement and i'll talk a little bit more about at the end of the show but for those of you who saw my community post yesterday where i posed a certain question we'll probably have a feeling at what's coming next anyway so stick around a little bit towards the end for that all right let's talk about osim awara hopefully i've not butchered that completely he is the 21-year-old French midfielder um, who plays for Olympiac, uh, Olympic Lyonnais. Um, probably their best player. In fact, there's no probably about it. He's their best player. Uh, central midfielder. This is the one guy that you'll hear people constantly talking about. Uh, I would say, you know, particularly when you're looking at People who can play number 10, people who can play number eight. This is the guy that I would suggest most people want. And um, it seems like at the moment, what seems to be happening is per day, we seem to be being linked with elite players. <laughs> players that you wonder if we have a chance of getting, whether it's, um, you know, someone like Thomas Party, uh, the, uh, the right back that I mentioned yesterday, or this guy. You're right, Lee Gunner? <laughs> he knows who I'm talking about. Um, and the right back that I spoke about yesterday, or or this particular man. Um, as I said yesterday, when it came to, I've even forgotten his name. I'm taking a mech out of uh, Lee Gunner. I've completely forgotten his name. Um, obviously, as I was talking about Asherif Hakimi yesterday, see, I had to look into my archives now to get that. <laughs> um, as I said yesterday about Hakimi, um, quite frankly, if there's an opportunity of Stan Kroenke reaching into his own personal pocket to sign this player because you're almost guaranteeing success, this is him. There's three players I would say that for that we didn't live with. Party, uh, Ashraf Hakimi, and this kid. This kid is technically superb. Um, the, the best way I can describe him, I would say he's Santi Corzola with pace. That is how good I think he is. Um, very wonderful on the ball. Very, very confident on the ball. Mainly, he, he mainly is a right foot, but comfortable enough on his left foot if he needs to. Glides past players effortlessly. Um, has the old tackle in him as well. Uh, but just a technically refined player. To me, if, Ke if Kevin De Bruyne is, is, is the best midfielder in the world, this guy, maybe second or third, I think he's that good. And he's 21. That's what's scary about that. I would have said this about this kid two years ago. That is how good this kid is. And that's why I think we have no chance of signing him. Um, but I think he is so, so good. Oh, man. I mean, People are talking about, oh, Danny Sabayos this, Danny Sabayos there. Let me tell you something. I like Danny Sabayos. This guy is levels. I mean levels above Danny Sabayos. In fact, I'll go a step further. Levels above what Danny Sabayos will ever be. I'm just, I'm just being real with you guys. I think he's so, so good. So, so good. And that's why, to be honest, I don't think we have any chance of getting him. In the moment, he's being linked with Liverpool, City, Barcelona. Let me show you something. Like Party, like Hakimi from yesterday, there is not a team that won't be after this kid if he's available. Uh, he's so good. I, I, can't, I can't... To me, if I had to make... And I'm one of the things I'm going to do, because people keep asking me to, um, not like a, a, a Ronaldo or a Messi. That's always an easy answer. But people keep asking me, 
what are my top 10 dream signings for Arsenal this summer? You know, I'm not going to say unrealistic shit. Um, and some people might say this is unrealistic, but I mean, not, nothing like Messi or Ronaldo or anything like that. But what are my genuine top 10 uh, targets from transfer targets we have? What is my top 10 dream signings? Um, and we have had to have been linked with them this year. So I'm going to make that video. I'm going to make that video this week. I'm going to drop that on Sunday. Um, because, yeah, I think that would be a, um, an interesting video for people. Because I know people bitch and moan that I talk about transfer targets. And to, me, to be honest, I do that because I know there are geeks like me out there that genuinely want to know. And then deep down, it probably ain't going to happen. But you still just want to have that hope. Because as human beings, if you don't have hope, what, what are we doing? And that's kind of my, that's whole, my whole thing. I, I just want to just put out there what, what we could potentially get if we put a bit of effort in. Because I know I, Pepe, some, some of you would have write, write off, wrote off uh, Pepe. If you told me this time a year ago we'd have bought Nicholas Pepe, I'd have laughed in your face. So I think, like, for, from my perspective, um, and speaking of Pepe, I'll come back to him in a second. But from my perspective, that's why I talk about these stories. I like to talk about what is possible um, or what may be possible in the future. And then secondly, I also like to talk about these transfer targets because it, it clearly gives an idea of what Arteta, the board, the press who may know more than we do, are thinking in terms of what positions we're, we're looking to strengthen. And um, I think all of us can, can agree the core of that midfield, I've said it for years, needs to be strengthened. Um, I like the idea personally of bringing in a defensive midfielder and someone like an OR who can, who can, who can really strengthen the core of that midfield. Imagine if you had party in him. Jeez, don't even need to get anyone else, bro. Get those two on board. Oh, ha, <laughs> ha. Oh, oh my gosh. Imagine those two in the middle of the park, bro. I say, let's take on anybody. All right, we're ready. Let's go. Let's go. And speaking of Pepe, you know, I think sometimes we're looking at, you know, the potential solution for Pepe. Maybe do you change position with him? Do you change the style of play? This award kid, is, I, I guarantee you, will be able to unlock whatever it is that is missing in Nicolas Pepe. You'll be able to unlock it 100%. Because I think a lot of Pepe's problem at the moment is he's dropping deep to collect the ball. Because someone like a, a Granit Xhaka, who plays as our playmaker at the moment, is not giving the ball to him quickly. And when he does give the ball to him, it's some darting uh, attempt. And Pepe is either left to try and chase that, which is usually a ball that's going out, or he's having to come deep to collect the ball. Whereas with this war kid, he will not need to do that. Uh, to me, I think he's so good. He's so technically good. Dream signing, do I think it will happen? No. Uh, I'm not going to tell you where he is on my dream signing list because that will ruin the purpose of Sunday's video. Look out for Oa. He's 100 I'll tell you, nice and early, he's in my top 10 dream signings for Arsenal this summer. Uh, but what do you guys think I can see the chat room active, but I'm going to come to them in a minute. Let me know down below. I hope you guys can hear me as well because I'm, I'm on my work laptop. It's my break, to be fair. I'm on my work laptop. Um, so, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys can hear it. I couldn't be asked to fire up my usual station, so hopefully you guys can hear me fine. Um, and the lighting is okay. It should be in here. <laughs> so, all right. Um, so that's that. Secondly, let's talk about uh, Unai Nunes. No, not Unai Emre, Unai Nunes, who's the Atletico Bilbao defender. Um, we've been linked with a couple of Spanish defenders. I'll talk about the other one shortly. This is one of them. He plays for Atletico Bilbao, 23 years old. Um, decent talent, to be fair. Um, and this one is one that I could see happening. I could realistically see this happening. He hasn't had as much game time um, as possible, namely because he's being kept out of the team at the moment. That's not due to the fact that I think he's a poor defender. 
He just hasn't been able to get into the team at the moment. Currently being valued at 26 million euros. Um, there's a feeling that uh, uh, um, Arteta generally wants to bring in some Spanish talent. He's been linked with three Spanish players uh, today. This is one of them. Uh, decent enough. I'm not going to pretend to you like I know the abundance about him. I know more about the second defender than this guy. Uh, but what I will say about Nunes is he seems like a guy who um, is very strong when it comes to, you know, intercepting the ball, just from little things I've seen on YouTube. You know, he's, I'm hoping, I, it's going to sound like a horrible thing to say. I feel like he's got Mustafi's strength. He's got Mustafi's strengths. I'm hoping none of Mustafi's weaknesses. Uh, but he seems to like attacking the ball. He's got a good uh, interception. He likes a slide tackle. He likes to block uh, block um, the ball. Uh, pretty good aerially, which I don't think Mustafi is. So pretty good aerially. Pretty good at clearing the ball aerially from the little clips I've seen here and there. Um, you know... I think those are his main strengths. So we'll we'll see what happens with him. Like I say, I don't know an abundance about him, but he looks like a decent enough talent. It's very clear that we're after defenders, just given this is what, the seventh or eighth defender we've been linked with in the last couple of weeks. This is an area we need to strengthen. Yes, I get that Salab is coming on board. We can't put too much on that kid. Um, and it's important that we bring on someone with a little bit of experience. Could it be this guy? Does anyone who knows Nunes or knows about La Liga see Nunes play? Is any more information they can give me? Let me know. Um, and I'll obviously comment more on that. It was hard to find stats on it, weirdly. But hey, it is what it is. Let's talk about a defender that we were linked with heavily, heavily in the summer prior to bringing on David Luiz and uh, Saliba. And that is Paul Torres. In fact, so much so, that's even a lie in itself. We were linked with him last January. That is how long we've been linked with Paul Torres. He is someone who plays for Villarreal. First of all, let me talk about his traits. Again, another 23-year-old defender, uh, another Spanish man. I can't see Arteta bringing in Nunes and him. I think it will be a case of either or. I think maybe Nunes is the backup plan to this guy. This guy would be a great uh, candidate to play with a Salaba, by the way. Um, again, someone with bags and bags of experience. Uh, I think he's about six foot four, approaching six foot five. Um, good, good defender, man. I, I mean, I, I think he is, I think he's really good. My worry at the time a year ago, a year and a half ago, was I think I said in my re transfer report that I was a little worried that he had tendencies to make rash mistakes, a bit Koscielny like I think it was what I said about him because when Koscielny was at his best and this was pre Achilles injury, and um, he was quick, um, was good but needed to be directed, um, and I was hoping that this guy wouldn't be in the same sort of mould. Uh, but from my understanding, I think he, he, he's a good player. Looks like he's got a, a, a good a bit of pace on him, which is unusual for a tall player. Let's face it, tall players are not often that quick. Uh, but he looks like he's got a decent amount of pace on him. 23 years old, like I said. Um, has had a debut for Spain, from what I can see. Has made 25 appearances all season, scoring two goals, one for Spain. Um, it looks like on his debut, wow, and uh, and one goal in the La Liga, uh, great passer of the ball, uh, a bit disappointing in the sense that he was six foot four, six foot five, not amazing in the air. So we're relying on maybe Saliba for that because Saliba is very good in the air. Um, so it's always good to have def a defensive partnership where you're not doing the same things. You don't want to get, you don't want them get attacking the same ball or clattering into each other. You want them to develop a good understanding. Remember, Saliba is 6'3". I think he's like 6'3". So having big, tall defenders, I, you know me, that's the kind of thing that gives, gets me a, 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 gives me a semi. So I like that type of stuff. So I, I think I feel like we could do with some height in the team. We can do it, If we can get height and pace in the team, great. 
Um, good pass on the ball as well. So, you know, in, in today's modern day and age, and particularly under Arteta, I don't care where you play on the pitch, you could be the goalkeeper. If you can't pass, it's going to be a problem. So, clearly this is something that he's obviously get, gotten from Pep. And actually, to be fair, all the defenders that we're being linked with at the moment, are they all have two things in common. They're young and they can pass the ball. I think it's important for us to get a backup plan for Adam Makano. So I'm personally pleased we're being linked with a lot of different sorts of players, and particularly defensively. I think it would be naive to put all our chips into one basket about Adam Makano. Again, I hate to pat myself on my own back. I said to you guys a year and a half ago, I didn't believe we would get Adam Makano. I just felt like it was too coveted. The PR game is too high on him. Forget about it. It's not going to happen. Now that the price is lowered, we know that at least Chelsea, Barcelona, and possibly Real Madrid are after centre-backs. Uh, Man United are always looking for centre-backs. These are teams, for one reason or another, that have better chance of getting these types of players than we do. Not to mention, I always thought he would go Man City. Oh, I've said that from day dot. It doesn't look like Man City have come in for him yet, but yet being the operative word. Um, so I think this Pal Torres could be an, a good option. He's obviously got the Liga experience, um, but he comes in with at, at, the, at least the sort of senior level uh, uh, experience that a seller but doesn't have. So for me, I think it'd be a good improvement to the team. Um, that was one thing I wanted to see. I wanted to see someone young play next to Saliba, but someone with experience. And this could be that guy. And just to add a further dimension to this and why it's in, in, is being widely reported at the moment is that um, Paul Torres is interestingly learning English. Why? So it does make it, you do wonder. And then you also have to remember, and I think I mentioned him earlier, uh, that he plays in the same team as a certain Arsenal legend, and that is Santi Cozola, as Kenny Ken would say. Um, and there's a belief that Agent Santi has been on the case and has uh, tried to convince not only him, uh, but also Samuel uh, Chukwizi, who is the Nigerian winner, another excellent, excellent player, a player that Arsenal almost signed three, four years ago. Um, and, then, uh, and then Samuel Chukwizi, uh pulled out of it for whatever reason um, and went to um, Villarreal and has been killing it over. So I'll tell you what, if, if Agent Santi is on the case, if he's on the case, let Agent Santi work. That's all I can say. So what do you guys think about that or even about the Chukwizi, uh potential link? What do you guys think? Let me know. Again, leave that in the comments chat room. I'll come to you guys in a second. You know how I roll. Um, the third Spanish player we were being linked with, once again, was this Carlos Solia. Um, he's the guy I'm, I'm the least keen on, I must admit. He's 23 years old. Um, 23 years old. He's recently lost his place in the team, which is why he's being linked at the moment. Uh, place for Valencia, excuse me, yes. Place for Valencia. Um, decent enough player. I think he's got some ability to him, though. Can play anywhere, anywhere in that midfield, apart from the... Actually, he can play on the left, actually. He can play centrally on the left, right, centre. He's a central midfielder. Plays a lot of his uh, game on the right-hand side. Has recently lost his place in the TM2, and I'm going to find his name, because I've completely forgotten, to... Um, Yes, Torres has lost his name to, right? Yeah, Fer Ferran Torres. He's lost his name to. He's lost his name to. He's lost his um, place in the team to. Um, but he's a decent enough player. I'm said to have a lot of ability. Uh, I think Valencia do still like him and rate him as a player. Um, I think sometimes, from what I can see of him, the reason why he lost his team game is. Uh, place of the team is he just laps his concentration a little bit. I don't think defensively he's particularly that good. Um, I must admit, this, I, I feel like this is one I would personally pass on. Uh, I don't necessarily think we need a winner 
I think if we are going to bet a winner, actually, I'd prefer Ryan Fraser. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. But I know that he's supposed to be, before someone says it, like a left central midfielder. I know, I know that. Just, I think he's a decent pass to the ball. Um, got decent movement and that. But just for me, I just feel like there are better players out there. But again, you guys let me know what you think. I think I did put up one more story in my community post. Let me have a look. Guys, please do stick a like on this video. You know what I always say. And if anyone has left me a donation, bless you. Thank you very much. I will come and, and shout you out in a second. I'm not ignoring you. I'm just not looking at the chat at the moment just because I'm trying to make sure I capture all these stories. Um, but most importantly, the best possible donation is, or as, or as I always say, is a like because it helps the channel grow. You know, And to be honest, the, the channel growth has stalled a little bit and i get it you know the coronavirus uh trying to say it high enough that youtube don't pick it up <laughs> i know that 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 has affected uh things generally for everybody across youtube um but the best way you guys can help out with that is by just taking a second to just say all right all right let me just stop you this and just press that thumbs up button yeah so that would be the thing that i would say for that all right let me talk about one more story. And uh, I said we were linked with three, but I've also seen another story here that I figure I should talk about. And that is, I'm not going to talk about the Chris Smalling story because it depresses me every time I think about it. Um, oh, I'll talk about that story as well because actually I have seen, you know what, let me talk about that story first. Um, Arsenal are being linked with Callum Kavanagh. Now, I've seen this story two, three times over the last couple of weeks. So I feel like there might be some substance to it. Um, he is currently a uh, place for um, Middlesbrough. Um, and he is the son of, um, oh, is it Colin Kavanagh? One of them French players, I think it's Colin Kavanagh was his dad. Um, and he's being highly coveted. Um, obviously he's an Irish forward. Um, and it's been hot shit in terms of the Borough under 18. So much so that Borough actually, I think, started playing him prior to the break. Um, and Arsenal, Chelsea, and now Celtic are in the race for um, the, the guy's signature. What do you guys think? For, my, for me, I'm always in favour of signing any good young players that's going to add something to the future. Um, you guys know. I love Balogun, who is the striker um, that currently plays for our under-23s. Um, I think he's an excellent talent, um, and I think he's someone that's going to kick on and do bits. I don't think he'll be for Arsenal, but it's just because I think the competition is too much. Um, there'll be too much pressure. if Even if Uber and, and Laka were to go, there'll be too much pressure on um, Arsenal as a team to replace both of those strikers. I don't see Balogun getting a run out or a shot, not to mention that Eddie's still there as well. You've got Martinelli who's there. I just, I don't see a route for Balogun, to be honest. Um, so with that in mind, maybe someone like a, Cal uh, a Callum Kavanagh, he really is that good. Uh, bring him on board and let's see what the kid's got. 16 years old, uh, um, being highly coveted. Um, there's a belief that Chelsea may be favourites, given that um, you know Frank seems to be wanting to sign all British and Irish talent at the moment. It keeps every time I see a British or Irish name, Chelsea seems to be in the running for them. So I don't know what's going on. Uh, but uh, Celtic, obviously Celtic, they have a lot of Irish stars in Scotland. Um, so you could see that being an, another challenge for us if we were genuinely interested in. Is there anyone that knows more about this kid than, than, than I do? Do let me know if it's worth it. Leave it in the comments below. Leave it in the chat room if you can. Um, all right, final story I'll talk about because my lunch break is running out. I need to get up out of here. And that is, um, I spoke about this guy a couple of days ago, and that's Mark Rocker. He is the holding midfielder for Espanyol. Um, the, the kid looks good. I said it before. I think he looks like a more capable version of Granite Xhaka, 23 years old, loves a diagonal left ping, uh, but can actually 
mix up his game a little bit more. You know, I think he has a better short game. You know I me, mean? for me, one of my biggest frustrations with Granit Xhaka, among the many, is the, is the fact this boy can't seem to short pass the ball. Just pass it five, six yards. Mix up the game a little bit. Um, whereas I think this, this kid has a, a little bit of a better grasp on how to do that. Um, as I mentioned a couple of days ago, um, um, he's uh, currently coming, sorry, Espanol look like they're headed towards relegation. Um, so although there's a 40 million pound or 40 million euro uh, uh, release clause in his contract, there's a belief that he might go for a little less given that they are on relegation. I feel like this is, a, again, another type of sign-in, but I do think it's realistic. I think Arsenal can make, depending on the price. Um, at the moment, he boasts a record of two and a half tackles per match. Uh, he's calm on the ball, um, like, has a great distribution. Like I say, I think, I think his passing looks better than Granit Xhaka to me. I said this a couple of days ago. Um, uh, played a good winning role. I didn't know about this. Played a winning role in Spain's uh, under-21 winning side last summer, um, where he played obviously alongside Manny Ceballos and Fabian Ruiz. Um, so yeah, I do feel like this is a, a, a type of signing that Arsenal can make. He's obviously being linked again today in uh, the Scum paper. Uh, but what again do you guys think? Um, is this a player you guys have had, had an opportunity to? to look at a little bit more closely, let me know. Leave it in the comments below if you can. All right, guys. We are literally going to do nine minutes of questions. This ain't going to be like my OTOT time because it's my lunch break. Um, and I actually need to make it before I come back on the clock. Uh, but make sure we could, we'll just run through some questions. Any questions you want me to answer, please do let me know. Um, I said I was going to make an announcement. I might as well do that now before I forget. Um, I put in my community post that um, I was looking. Obviously, you know, I want to try and get, make this channel grow and be as successful as possible. Uh, but, you know, quite frankly, we're all stuck indoors. There's not a lot to do. There is no football on. Um, and material's hard to come by. Um, and, you know, I was talking with the wife here, you know, pillow talk, talking to the wife here. Just generally, George Jackin and you know, talking about concerns for the channel. She goes, Why don't you do a cooking thing? You're a great cook. And I was like, Oh, oh no, yeah. people will be interested in that. And then I said, Yeah, but Robbie kind of does the same thing. So then I showed her one of Robbie's videos, and he, he, she, no disrespect to Robbie, shout out to Robbie. But he, she, he was like, Oh, yeah, but you could do something a little bit better than that. You could put a little chick swag on that. So I was like, yeah, maybe. And then I thought, let me throw it out there, because I thought if you guys are a little bit indifferent to it, or if you guys hated the idea, I wouldn't bother doing it. I threw it out there, and it seemed to have got a really strong response from you guys, that so you guys would be at least interested to see me do uh, something else, something different. And one of the things I guess um, all the people are starting to look at doing is, you know, when you're thinking about doing something around the house, people are thinking about things like, you know, DIY skills are improving. People are making babies, um, I would imagine. And also cooking, just generally refining cooking skills, cooking, um, and obviously being at home, you know, you shut your laptop 5, 5.30, um, shut your laptop, and you're already at home. So you can cook a little bit early, you can do things a little bit more. And that, I know me personally, I've started to expand my knowledge and stuff on cooking. Clearly, I like my food. <laughs> so for me, my, my aim is I'm trying to cook a little healthier, but also cook a little different things as well. Um, and try and just general, try and give some tips out there. I'm going to make a big thing out of it. This is literally, this is not going to be a, 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 a big thing moving forward. It's not going to turn into a cooking channel per se. Uh, but this is just, you know, lockdown city. So during lockdown, what do you do? Cook. So I'm going to just do some uh, cooking things. One of the things I'm going to do tonight is what can I do with diced beef? So um, I'm starting to prepare some stuff now. I'm going to cook anything. 
until we get started today. That's not going to be a live video, though. It's going to be an edited thing. So um, that I will try and drop that tomorrow. Um, so make sure you keep an eye on that. So cooking with chick, basically. Uh, so make sure you, you do keep an eye out on that. Um, let me get into the chat room and see what you lot say. All right. Oh, Fahid, yes, I did see his comments. I hope someone dealt with that. You ain't a king. Oh, okay. This guy just needs time out because I see he's on some sort of idiot flex. All right. Um, Raul uh, Torres. Um, you know, I knew that's from La Liga. We can only dream, bro. A lot of swap deals will go through this summer. Uh, Mbappe is in the same league, so you wouldn't have him as well. Um, Chick, uh, if we get these three players instant, we're title contenders. Oh, 100%. That's probably why we won't get him, Donald. <laughs> That's probably why we won't get him. Um, by the way, for the people who keep complimenting the hat, thank you. Um, quite frankly, I got the hat because my hair looks shocking. And I'm getting sick and tired of putting it out there. So, well, let me cover it up. Um, we need a creative uh, midfielder that scores goals. Yeah. Um, he's, uh, in terms of Hasim Aoua, he scored 24 goals in, yeah, 24 goals and 24 assists. So he's good. He's good. He can, he's capable. What's his full name? Hasim Aoua. I can hear you. Yeah, that's a better, this is a better setting, to be honest. Ah, good. I hope you like it. I hope you like it. I know people always bitch about my lighting and stuff, which I can understand. So, yeah, hopefully you like it. Um, as long as Granite and Ozil and those guys are at the club, they're holding back. They're holding the club back. I agree. But I also don't think that we're going to sell Ozil anytime soon. I've made peace with the fact that Ozil will be here at least one more year. My suggestion, my bro, my suggestion, my bro, and it's just a suggestion, just get used to it. One more year. One more year and we're rid of it. One more year. Ah, young boy, star boy. Um, Chick, I personally don't see Hakimi going to Chelsea. They have a nice prospect in James. So Arsenal just pay the money. Yeah. Uh, I, don't see, I don't see you being wrong. I I know. <laughs> as soon as I saw it first name was you guys, I was like, oh no. You're gonna get the shivers. Um we desperately need a right back as well, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Even if you wanted to keep Hector, he needs he needs at least at least some competition. Uh, Paul Torres is better. He's six foot four, three. I think he's six. I think he's taller than that. He's taller than that. He's one ninety one, which I believe is six four. I believe that's six four. Because I'm one eighty six and I'm six one. Uh, and he's left footed. Yeah, Paul Torres is left footed. I could see us bringing in Max Aaron's from Mar and listen, I wouldn't be disappointed with Max Aaron's. He's no Hakimi, but I wouldn't be disappointed with that. Um, Apple Meccano would be a brilliant signing, but I don't see it happening. Uh, he's going to City. That's quite a change. Bro, I said this from day dot. On day one, I was the first one to say he ain't coming to Arsenal. He's going to City. Um, come on, people, we should know by now we ain't getting anybody serious or ready to come in. All we're doing is getting our hopes up for no reason. Arteta is there to develop the existing squad. It is the concern of people. It is the concern of people. I, I can't lie. That is a big concern of people. You look unrecognisable, bro. Is that a bad thing? Is that a good thing? I've got a little bit more roughage. Is that what it is? Chig is a king. You damn right, Chig is a king. Black, a black king. You damn skippy from London. 
This is no accident. <laughs> Getting this hat was no accident. Um, not as excited with any of his names, really. Oh, Jassy, you're never excited, my bro. <laughs> you're never excited. Uh, Florent Torres is simply better. Solio is just a workaholic. Workaholic, yeah. Do you know what he kind of reminds me of? Who is that? Who is that brother that played for Real Madrid that was linked with us last summer that nobody wanted but United Emre looked fixed to get him? Um, I can't remember, but he was a right winner. And he looked like a guy that worked hard as well. And um, oh, my memory sometimes for names is so poor. Well, I know someone in the chat room knows exactly what I'm talking about. One guy, 20, I think he was 28, 29, an older cat. I can't remember. Someone, someone help me out with that. Vasquez, that's the one. Thank you, Starboy, Ben. That's the one. Omar, thank you. That's the guy. Um, he's, he's that type of guy, the Solia guy. He's in that bracket. He's like, right. he'll do a decent job for you. Um, but yeah. Uh, Spanish winners are normally slow. Yeah, although when Torre, when um, Reyes came to Arsenal, when he first came, he was rapid. He was rapid. And there's not a lot to speak about. He's had a haircut. Personally, I've been, uh, for me, I've wanted us to sell Hector for about two years. I just, you know, whether you think he's good enough or not, and I don't think he is, is a different debate. I also just think that his knee injuries have finished his main asset, which was speed. So it's like, why, why is he in the team now? He can't cross the ball. He now doesn't have his speed. He was never great defensively. What's the point now? Other than sentimental reasons, you know, you know my feeling on sentiment. Um, what's the point? Chelsea, the exciting ones won't happen, unfortunately. Our Hakimi... Yeah. But if they do, Mike, they do, I'm coming for you, bro. I'm coming for you. Justice, I take both players. Hi, right, Sam, I hope you're well. I hope you're well. Kinchuk. Hi, Abdi, I hope you're good, my bro. All right, I'm running out of my break, and I said I would not do OTOT, and I'm doing OTOT. Have I missed any donations, by the way? If I have, I sincerely apologize. Because I, I couldn't find any. I scrolled back as far as I could on StreamYard. Uh, those tele assists aren't, aren't from crosses, bro. Uh, Party is honestly the only name I take, but he's not the finished article. But none of these guys are. Bro, I'm talking about a 21, a 23, and a 23-year-old. Wait. No, I'm sorry. I'm talking about two 21-year-olds in Hakimi and... Um, sorry, I was right. <laughs> I'm talking about uh, two 21-year-olds in Hakimi and Aua and a 23-year-old in party. But this is the sort of levels of players that you need to be putting, bringing into the team. Because we're all talking about replacing players that need to go. Right? Mustafi's been linked with a move. He's 27. And he's the youngest. Right? Um... Granite Jacker, I think, is 27 as well. I'd personally get rid of him, but I don't think the club will sell him. Um, Lucas, Torre, uh, Lucas Torreira, I saw, was being linked again today with AC Milan. I just couldn't be asked to talk about it because it's the same thing. They're looking to, 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 to relight their original interest in him. Um, that's a 26-year-old. Okay, great. He's a young player. Um, what's it called? Uh, Meza Ozil, the one that most people want to leave. Is 31 years old. Uh, Abamian, who people are so desperate for him to say, he's 30 going on 31. Lacazette, 27 going on 28. You know, these are players we're going to. Uh, Scott, uh, uh, Socrates, 31 years old. David Luiz, who, who was the new signing that came in last summer. How old is he? 32? You know? I think we need to start bringing in some young blood in there. I, experience is all well and good, but I think 
if you play this sort of intense football that Arteta is looking for, you need some of these young cats to be able to execute it. Um, and all the one thing that I would say all those players have in common is that their stamina um, is for days. All of them. All of their stamina is very, very high. We need it. We're, we're just going to need it. So normally, like, like, like Jousey, I'm not all that fussed on edge. But um, I think in this particular instance, it's important. Hey, Rob, thank you, my, my brother. Um, always good to see you. Uh, and thank you very much for loving the content. Thank you. Um, I hate using the word content now because it's Lee's word. <laughs> uh, I'll take Rocker. I'll take Rocker too in a heartbeat. He's a better version of Jack, I'm telling you. Um, cooking videos are great. I would love one. I'll do one, see how you guys react to it. I'm not going to make it a big, big thing. I just hope you guys are enjoying it. Um, hi, Jake. Hi, Sergio. I hope you're well. Guterreras. I love, I love, I love, my Sergio's love coming into the chat room. That's my second Sergio now. Big up, Sergio. What are your thoughts on Missel uh, Sabitza to uh, be our box to box powerhouse? Like him. Is he, has he been linked though? Because that's another player that I've secretly been watching. Has he been linked? Would I take Kinsley Coleman? No, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. Chiba, you're a great talent spotter. I like to think so. <laughs> but I'm not an ITK. I'm not going to pretend like, you know, I, 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 I know all about this player. These are just players that, in my opinion, I think would suit the team. That's all. Brian Fraser. Yeah, I'd take him on a free. To be a squad player, why not? Mr. Roberts. Thank you, my bro. I hope you're well. Would I take, would Jonathan da uh, David make your list? Um, you have to find out. Uh, just for any latecomers that don't know what Elliot means by that, I will be doing a, I'll be filming it this week, a video about my top 10 dream signings for Arsenal this summer. And that will drop on Sunday. Um, I'll still be doing these shows every single day. The stories at the moment are coming out every single day. And, Tonight, I'll be filming a video about cooking. And that will drop tomorrow. Sorry, Lacazette is 28 going on 29. There you go. See what I'm saying? Now, a bit like Rob, Robbie, man. My, my man recently lost his dad. So um, I hope he's well. Because um, that's not easy. So big up, Don Robbie. And speaking of which, RIP to Blacks as well. Um, so I saw Troops' Twitter on that. So quick RIP to him. And, um, you know, I'm not really a political guy. And I most certainly don't have time for this man if I am a political guy. But, you know, big up to our Prime Minister. My gosh. Listen, I don't want to think of anyone suffering. I don't care who they are. And, you know, at the moment, my man's in hospital, so. I hope he's well. I hope he continues to fight it. And I think, you know, I think I faced some criticism this week because from a particular individual I'm not going to give any shine to, who for, for so many different reasons I could have argued with him and absolutely trashed him on his ridiculous point. But I think, just like everyone else, three, four weeks ago, um, I think I did a video with Lee on my channel where I talked about the, the C word. And um, my whole point was that, you know, um, first, of, first and foremost, I think Lee had a, more, a slightly more flippant attitude towards it than I did. My whole thing was more, you know, I think nobody should be overly concerned, but that people should still just be safe, wash their hands, and just make sure that they're okay. Uh, but obviously, every single hour, this thing changes. 
or something you know develops or changes that we didn't know already know about before and obviously my attitude has changed the more people are dying especially people that i know so um you know i i, I still feel like people should just be careful and stay safe and wash their hands and shower, you know, and don't buy these stupid surgical masks because they don't do anything. Buy the proper thing. Buy the, I'm waiting for my proper thing. It, it comes in May. I ordered that two weeks ago. I'm making sure I get the proper one. Not one of these stupid surgical masks. The surgical masks don't work. Surgical masks were designed to keep things in. They were designed that so that doctors aren't spitting in wounds or, or, or anything that comes out of their mouth doesn't land in a wound and infect the wound. It was never designed for this. You just look like a prat wearing it. Get the actual proper thing, you know? I think people never understand that. Um, you know, wear gloves where you can, but ultimately the gloves are only as good as, as washing your hands in a lot of ways. So just wash your hands. You know, and, and that's still my message. So, yeah, I say all that to say, get well soon, Boris. Um, big up to Mr. Gomez. Um, is this your home for you? Is this is this home for you, son? Nice one, Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is home. This is home. My, it's a kitchen. It's a different room. But hence why my audio is bad. Uh, picture might not be the same because um, I'm not using my PC. Uh... Yes, you're right. You're you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. I remember. I remember. Yes, I do like him. I do like him. Um. Chief, do I race Sylvania? Did, did you race Sylvania? Yeah, I thought he was decent. I thought he was decent. I thought you were on Lee Stream. No. Uh, pretty sure no one knows Adrian Finn, but people will, if buy and give him a chance next season. Only the youngster I'd move for. Uh, don't go looking for YouTube videos of him either. Okay. <laughs> I'm alternating between this and Lee's stream. All right, well, don't worry. Head over to Lee's stream. Tell him that Chig sent you. Um, I'm out of here. Like I said, I'll be back tomorrow, most likely. Hopefully with a cooking thing, so you guys will enjoy it. Um, I don't know yet what I'm going to do with this diced beef, but hopefully it will taste nice. Um, you'll actually at least be able to experience that journey with me. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Um, I will always bring you stuff that you guys will enjoy. Uh, make sure you keep it locked on Fridays to the combat show. The link to that is in the description below. That is mine, Ola, and Will's channel, um, where we'll be hosting that and uh, talking MMA. So for anyone that keeps asking me MMA stuff, I'm not going to reply on this channel anymore. I'm just going to say go to the combat channel. Every Friday we do a show. Good Friday won't be any different. So make sure you do check that, that out. Um, movies, I'm still reviewing movies. I'll probably be dropping something today um, on my movie channel. So I'm getting that off and running. Again, the link to that is in the description right now. So go check that out. Uh, Chick Flicks is the movie channel. Um, I'm doing little bits and bobs around that channel. So you're going to start seeing some stuff evolve over the next couple of days with both channels. So I hope you guys will enjoy it. Uh, tip tap drop a box on the line, yeah. Go follow me on Insta again. Link is in the description. But Guna Eagle Eye, uh, Twitter at Colossal Chief. Not so fussed about Twitter, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm up, out of here. Take care. Thank you for listening to me rabbit on for the last 49 minutes. I'm out, Black King out. Peace.